Welcome to PCR London Vows 2024. My name is Sam Dawkins. I'm an interventional cardiologist from Oxford. I'm delighted to be joined today with Mariana Adamo, who is an interventional cardiologist and heart failure cardiologist from Brescia in Italy, and also by Philip Lertz, an interventional cardiologist from Mainz. It's great to have you both with us. Um, in this conference, we've seen the one-year data from TriSend2 published, um, which is an exciting new piece of information for us in the management of patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation. Tell us, Philip, a little bit about TriSend2. Thank you. It's the first randomized study in the field of transcatheter tricuspid valve replacement, 400 patients in total, a two-to-one randomization. Mean age was 80, so these are clearly elderly patients, um, very symptomatic, three out of four were in NYHA class three and four, about 40% with ascites, and the baseline KCCQ was 53. So they're clearly limited in terms of their daily life. The study showed that replacement, as we all hope for, does not only reduce, but completely abolishes TR. So th that was very good. And overall, it was a significant study with a very strong signal in terms of um, improvement in quality of life, physical domain, mental domain, but also the ability of patients to participate in, in social activities. In terms of heart clinical endpoints, maybe a small trend, but, but no significance there. And so this is you know, a lot of new information for us. What do you think these results mean for the heart failure community, Mariana? Yeah, so I, I think that the, the main issue for the heart failure community is that this trial is, uh, uh, is uh, not blinded. Uh, so it's a limitation to evaluate quality of life endpoints. However, uh, the improvement in KCCQ uh, in this trial is uh, really huge. There was a, a very significant uh, improvement. So in the um, device arm, there was a uh, 66% of patients uh, improving the KCCQ of more than uh, 10 points uh, as compared to 36 in the control arm. So it's a huge improvement, uh, higher than in uh, pharmacological studies with the placebo. And the other uh, important uh, result uh, supporting the value of this uh, um, uh, data is that uh, the improvement in KCCQ is also associated with an improvement in other parameters like near class, but also, for example, six-minute walking test. And this was not observed in other clinical trials on transcatheter therapies. And uh, also the, the small, uh, even if small trend uh, in a, a numerically lower rate of events uh, um, in terms of mortality and heart failure hospitalization in the device group as compared to the control group is uh, reassuring. And last but not least, we also have data showing that KCCQ is uh, um, reliable in patients with uh, uh, TR undergoing transcatheter treatment. There is a recent publication uh, by Arnold and colleagues showing that um, this tool, even if uh, um, initially designed for patients with left side heart failure, is uh, valid also uh, on the right side. So all data that supports the, the results of um, uh, TRISIMD2. And finally, uh, of course, uh, TR is a, a pathology which uh, impact a lot on quality of life. Patients with TR uh, have a very poor quality of life with the con systemic congestion, with the involvement also of the um, uh, right, uh, right and left side because of uh, hypoperfusion and pulmonary congestion. So, of course, uh, a, a treatment uh, improving the quality of life is really, really welcome. So, important new data on both efficacy and safety of transcatheter tricuspid replacement. So, a question for you both then, what are the clinical implications of these results? First of all, it's great news that the study is uh, positive. We do have a transcatheter approach which allows us not only to reduce but abolish TR. We can treat more patients, more complex anatomies. We have a clear signal in terms of quality of life, which is clearly of relevance. We still would like to see a stronger signal in terms of heart clinical endpoints, so we, we need to, to wait a little bit longer and see um, whether that will come up. And what's also important to realize is that the study was conducted at a quite early stage of the, of the therapy in general. It's now approved. We make more experience, real world, and I think we will be able to improve the safety of the procedure a little bit, reduce bleeding rate, maybe also understand a little bit better how we can avoid AV block. So these are the tasks for the future. Mariana? And uh, for sure, yes, these uh, results are really promising because uh, as we have seen, there is a, a, a significant improvement in quality of life for heart failure patients, which is really important. Of course, uh, further studies are, are needed to confirm and to expand these results. 
So the TriSend 2 data adds some really important new information for us and the availability now of transcatheter tricuspid replacement in addition to repair offers us a new treatment option for patients with severe TR. We know that these patients have really challenging symptoms and they have uh, tricuspid regurgitation has a really big impact on their quality of life. Having tricuspid repair and replacement available to us with good safety and good efficacy for both really allows us to treat a very wide range of patients with this very challenging pathology. Well, that was a great discussion. Thank you very much for joining me, Mariana and Philip.